Time to talk about sunglasses, again, this time with product mascots. Sunglasses have become the standard cool character accessories when designing someone or something hip. Since using sunglasses to define a cool character by appearance has become so cliché, the effect of using them has become polarizing where it either helps the character look rather cool or makes the character seem like it's trying too hard and turning out to be cheesy or lame. While characters from movies and video games utilize the cool effects of sunglasses, those types of characters have a chance to show more personality besides simply trying to look cool. For product mascots, they need to rely on looking cool so the consumer will take the time to look at them and listen to them about the product or service. So to honor these mascots that try their hardest to stay hip, I'm going to look at the top 10 coolest product mascots. However, I'm going to base how cool they are solely on their sunglasses to demonstrate how well or how mediocre they look. So make sure you add quotation marks around the word cool when you say it, since some try a bit too hard and miss the mark. Number 10. Spuds McKenzie for Bud Light Spuds was Bud Light's original party animal mascot, as in he was a dog that Bud Light put in standard cool clothing, and the dog may have been male in the commercials, but it was actually played by a female. He only lasted from 1987 to 1989, but he left quite the impact on the world of advertising. Since some of the settings in the ads involved the beach, sunglasses were not only meant to make Spuds look like a cool dude, but they were also a smart option to protect the dog's eyes from the bright sun. Even after a short-lived prime, we still hear references to Spuds years later. Notice when there's a parody of Spuds, it is wearing sunglasses. So does that mean Spuds really did need the sunglasses to be cool? Eh? Really, he doesn't need the sunglasses, but that's the focus of this list, so I might as well point them out. He's cool because he's a dog who parties, or just because he's a dog. You could have had the commercial with a dog and I'd pay attention, probably saying something like, Wow, that commercial with the dog was pretty great! What was the name of that beer again? Something light? Miller? Yeah, that's partially why he was discontinued after such a short period of time. Looks like Bud Light was jealous of its own creation. And by jealous, I mean they were afraid they were going to lose sales, which is completely logical. Number 9. The Random Nintendo Kids from the 80s and 90s While these were not really mascots, they were still advertising Nintendo products in the same way that mascots did in the print ads. They were cheesy, and they were displaying the product as if this item transcended reality just like most video game ads at the time. Since print ads were still one of the most valid forms of advertising in the 80s and early 90s for Nintendo before the internet took off, the print ads, mainly in Nintendo power, couldn't show actual gameplay footage or accessories in motion, so they had to rely on over-the-top visuals that looked cheesy by today's standards. While there were many cool kids Nintendo used at this time, I like the one from the Power Glove ad. Look how dramatic this kid was. These sunglasses merely were there to back up how cool he was for having the power glove. Maybe he needs the shades to protect his eyes from the sheer awesomeness that glove is emitting. Apparently awesomeness translates to a shining light, making those sunglasses even more necessary. The power glove. You plug it in like any joystick, but the similarity stops there, and so does me reading this ad. Number 8. The Coca-Cola Polar Bears. The polar bears are more well known for their family-friendly, heartwarming images of them drinking Coca-Cola in the Arctic. Sometimes though, Coca-Cola puts sunglasses on these bears when they want to. Not sure how those will benefit the bears, but apparently Coca-Cola thought they needed to look cool somehow. Well, cooler since they were constantly surrounded by ice and... No, no, I'm not finishing that comment. It will just end in awkward groaning. End of this entry. Done. Number 7. Maxaroni for Stofers. This is probably one of the best examples of a company trying too hard to be cool. If you want to go over some cool tropes of the 90s, of course we have him wearing sunglasses, but you can't forget having the character know how to skateboard or rollerblade, and the obligatory thumbs up. He also has his own rap, which is incredibly generic. You might like it, but I think it's pretty forgettable. Also, did I say 90s because this ad is from 2002? Yeah, you missed the boat there, little Stofers. What I like about this commercial is everyone treats Max Roni as if he's this major celebrity, despite the fact this is his first and only ad. They were trying to push him too much. 
Stouffer's made a macaroni product to go along with his Premier, which was the same as the company's normal macaroni and cheese, except the pasta was shaped into rollerblades and other standard items kids might find cool. What were you basing this off of ad reps? Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2? Rocket Power? Sure, kids did actually find these activities cool, but this was so overused and such a forced attempt it probably contributed to the product and mascot's short life. Didn't Skippy do this? Are you two mascots the same person? Number 6. Finn the Goldfish for Goldfish Crackers The goldfish mascots are friendly. Too friendly. Like they will do anything to help you, no matter how inconvenient it is for them. Initially, the mascot was simply a living goldfish cracker wearing sunglasses. Pepperidge Farm decided to make this main goldfish who had some personality some more friends. Since his personality got more gentle as the ads went on, Finn put up his shades to show off his gregarious eyes. I guess Finn decided to drop the cool guy act to make himself more approachable to the kids. Number 5. Oh, it's him again. Mac tonight for McDonald's. I discussed him in my top 10 secondary mascots list, but I'll briefly go over him again. He was McDonald's mascot for a broad audience of kids and adults in the 80s and 90s, whose design was based off a jazzy lounge singer if lounge singers had crescent moons for heads. His design was also based off a few people, mainly UK personality Max Headroom, where he likely got his sunglasses from, and singer Bobby Darren. When he's not playing the piano, he's eating at McDonald's. Maybe. He's never actually shown eating the food. He sort of just looks at it. And drives to the restaurant. Except why are you looking away from the road? You might crash! Uh, hold on. That car may be in park. Of course, those lights look brighter than they should be, even for the nighttime. Maybe that's why he always needs his sunglasses. Wait, why does the moon need sunglasses? Hmm. Number 4. The Energizer Bunny. This rabbit doesn't need accessories to make himself cool. He already is and just happens to be wearing sunglasses. However, in comparison to the rabbit mascot he is based off of, the sunglasses do help him get the edge that he was looking for. Which rabbit was he based off of, you may wonder? The Duracell Rabbit. The Energizer Rabbit was actually a spoof of Duracell's mascot from the 70s and 80s, who stayed as Duracell's mascot in the UK and Australia, and made rare appearances in the US after the 80s. The Duracell Bunnies were a group of pink, battery-powered bunnies that played drums, with one of them being powered by Duracell batteries, never running out of power during the commercial's runtime. However, this was only supposed to be a short-lived campaign for Duracell, so Energizer used that opportunity to bring in its own rabbit that was cooler and played a different type of drum to a different type of beat both figuratively and literally. Energizer even trademarked the use of a battery bunny mascot in the US, so Duracell could not reintroduce the original pink rabbit as a counter campaign. While the Duracell bunny could still be used in certain countries, the Energizer Bunny basically became more iconic with its bass drum and slogan of it keeps going and going and going. The funny thing is, the Duracell Bunny has become so outdated in some areas that the Energizer Bunny looks like a completely original idea and no one actually knows that it's referencing its competition. Number 3. The Blue M&M The M&M spokes candies each have a distinct personality trait, with the blue one being the cool guy who thinks highly of himself. When he's not the arrogant one of the group, he sort of has a blues music theme going on, which is part of his main appeal when he premiered in 1995. So like Mac tonight, the sunglasses are there to make him look cool and calm like a blues singer. He can even play the saxophone. I'm more interested to know why it took until 1995 to introduce a blue M&M to the mix. It's a primary color! Number 2. Cool spot for 7-Up. He has cool in his name. He is literally just the red circle of the 7-Up logo with arms, legs, and sunglasses. There is no subliminal messaging with this one. 7-Up is cool, Cool Spot is cool, as the name implies. He also had a video game, which almost overshadowed his real purpose of advertising 7-Up Soda, since it was actually pretty fun when you get into it. You almost forget it's trying to sell you something until Cool Spot starts surfing on a 7-Up bottle. In this game, he collected spots to make himself more cool and rescue his friends. Not only was he cool as defined by his name, but he was also collecting spots to improve his coolness ratio. I'm not sure if it's working. 
Maybe he should play with his yo-yo some more that I'm partially convinced is a smaller cool spot he tied to a string. There can be only one! When he's not in video games or their lesser known sequels, he's fulfilling his main purpose in advertising the product by hanging out on the logo as the normal red spot. I can't tell if this is clever since it's turning something we normally see into a lovable mascot, or vice versa. I can't say that this is 7up's best idea because this is the company that brought us one of the best product accessories I've ever seen. The Uncola Glass. Look at this! Bring this to parties and you'll be cooler than the alleged Cool Spot. They should have brought this back once they realized Cool Spot was a gimmick that could not hold up for long. Number 1. Chester Cheetah for Cheetos Everything about the original Chester Cheetah is what you'd expect from a self-proclaimed cool character. From his voice, to his posture, to his slogan, to of course, his sunglasses. The only accessory or clothing in general he wears are the sunglasses, and as a result they are one of the most important parts of his appearance, and really what makes his appearance. Probably his most famous cool slogan was it ain't easy being cheesy. Chester got progressively cooler as his time as the mascot went on, with his commercials focusing less on slapstick and more on simply just how cool he was. He was apparently so cool that Frito-Lay decided to give him full responsibility of controlling how cheesy Cheetos would be with that lever. He put the consumer in some sort of danger with that level of cheese. What was he thinking? This was a mistake. Why is this setting even available? His coolness is even pushed in one of his video games, Chester Cheetah Too Cool to Fool. Don't think you could fool him since he's... I don't need to explain this. You can see how much his coolness was pushed by simply starting up the game. Look at all these pairs of sunglasses. The other animals have them. The strange enemies have them. The rocks have them. The rocks! Which I'm assuming are inanimate, so they probably don't have eyes. You can even collect sunglasses as an item in the game. So if you think I'm paying too much attention to the shades, I'm actually paying as much attention to them as Frito-Lay wanted me to give them. He kept the sunglasses in his 2007 redesign into a different type of character that did not care about how cool he looked. He went from being a hip feline to a vengeance-encouraging, somewhat creepy cheetah. This personality was later revised to be more fun-loving and less creepy, but his style still remained the same. While he might have kept the sunglasses, you can tell he's wearing them with no intention to look cool. While he doesn't really care about looking cool anymore, he still acknowledges his shades once in a while, even calling them cool and making a few jokes. And this is the real verified Chester Cheetah, so I can confirm he actually said this, since uh, Chester Cheetah exists in reality? Anyway, that's all for now on why Chester Cheetah is the coolest product mascot, with sunglasses being a key factor. So, who do you think is the coolest product mascot? Let me know! Thank you all for watching. If you want to hear more on the creepier Chester Cheetah redesign, you can check out my top 10 creepiest product mascots list, or my top 10 secondary product mascots list for more on Mac Tonight, or my last list on characters with sunglasses, or none of the above and enjoy your day or evening, whatever time of the day it is for you. Anyway, see you all in the next video.